Hello and welcome to the Enduro World Series show, the show that brings you the inside line on the best stories from all the Enduro World Series racing this year. This week we have a bit of a treat for you. We are in France for the first ever standalone EWSE, our very own international e-bike race series, where we pit the latest of modern technology against the toughest stages. And believe me, there is nowhere tougher than right here in Valberg. Before we get out onto the frankly alien terrain of this unique corner of Southern France, though, let's get a quick recap of the winners and losers from the previous two rounds. The 2022 EWSE season has already been the most hard fought yet, with some new names emerging from the shadows of struggling top dogs. At the opening round of the year at EWSE Tweed Valley, it was the star of 2021, Laura Charles, on her new squad, Miranda Factory Team, who took the victory ahead of Tracy Mosley. With Mosley not racing every round this year, all indicators pointed to it being the French woman's title to lose. In the men's race, Nico Vuyo, the dominant force in the field from the previous year, was in trouble. A lacklustre set of stage times had him down in sixth. Instead, the race was won for Orbea by the ecstatic Edgar Carballo Gonzalez. The big Spaniard clearly enjoyed his debut victory. The second round was fought in not one but two countries, Austria and Slovenia. EWSE Petsen Jamnica had drama from the start. A mechanical on the very first stage put the pre-race favourite, Laura Charles, out. The race was eventually won by one of the breakthrough stars of round one, Alia Marcellini. The Italian juked it out with Flo Espinera for the victory all day long. But a crash for Flo in the final stage saw her falling down to third, and it was specialised Sofia Wiedenroth jumping into second place. The men's race was a battle royale with five different stage winners in the opening five stages. The top three changed almost with every new check-in, with the podium slots at times covered by the same second. But it would be the winner of the first ever EWSE, Yannick Pontal, who took the victory from Thiago Ladeira, with Carballo Gonzalez in third. Only two seconds covered the top three after 61 kilometers of racing. As we arrive in France, Carballo Gonzalez and Marcellini lead the way in the overall standings. There we go then, the times at the top have never been tighter and EWSE continues to evolve into one of the fastest moving and growing forms of bike racing on the planet. Now, if you're tuning in for the first time and are thinking, but they've got a motor, surely that makes it easier. Well, I can promise you that it doesn't. And here is why. Not simply an EMTB category in an enduro race, EWSE brings its own challenges and difficulties. The distance covered, meters climbed and descended, and tight time constraints mean that racers are riding at close to maximum effort for the entire race. But just how hard is an EWSE race? Definitely harder than the normal EWS, I would say. Um, Pretty savage day so far, two races in and yeah, just constant. Everything is much faster, of course it's harder for the arms, uh, we do more ele elevation. Each race consists of between 8 and 12 stages, split into three different loops, with around a thousand metres of climbing in each loop. Riders have to think carefully about their battery management in order to maintain power throughout the race. Power stages are timed uphill stages that require all of a rider's skill and concentration to ride up cleanly, along with a healthy dose of e-bike power. The riders have gravity on their side for the remaining stages, but these are just as physical and demanding, running downhill at lengths of between one to five kilometers or more, and dropping several hundred meters in elevation. Riders can expect high speeds, steep descents, rocks, routes, and technical features, all with a heavier bike to keep under control. 
these time stages are linked with liaisons, which, whilst untimed, are crucial to the race. It's so hard. I think what a lot of people don't realize is the liaisons. So like when we're out there, we do multiple loops, but the liaisons in between are like at a tempo pace or whatever the speed limit is of the bike. So if it's up a fire road or a single track, you're on boost or just below, just to make it to the next stage. So like the physical requirements over a six hour, seven hour day are huge, man. If a rider is late for their designated start time, they will receive a time penalty. And these times are tight, offering little recovery time between a rider arriving at the start of the stage and dropping in for their run. Biggest lie ever, e-bike is quite hard. Even training, if you properly ride it, is you need only one hour and you're cooked. Whatever you think of e-bikes, you can't in all seriousness say that this sport looks easy. Told you it wasn't easy. E-bike tech is evolving almost as we speak and racing is a big part of that. We headed to the pits to search out all the latest and greatest race hardware. The EWSE has become a proving ground for bike brands to put their latest and greatest hardware to the test. We went on the hunt in the pits to see what bikes the top riders are racing here in Valberg this weekend. Series leader coming into Valberg, Edgar Carballo Gonzalez, has been riding his Orbea Wild FS to great success this year. It is 160mm of travel in the rear and 170mm up front. The big man has opted for a coiled shock and a Fox 38 fork to keep him under control. We can also see the new Galfer Shark Disc rotors that have an interesting looking braking surface, said to improve performance and stopping power. A 600 watt hour Bosch battery and motor system power Edgar through the big day of racing. One bike tricked out with the Pro Touches was Adrian Day's Lapierre Overvolt GLP2. A nifty little bit of Velcro to move the Bosch head unit off the handlebars and out of his way. Adrian has also made use of a gap in his frame, taping it up to store everything you might need during the race. A clever little hack for anyone with space on their bike. Adrian has opted to go with a 500 watt hour battery this weekend to help keep the weight of the bike down. This box the trend we are seeing in the rest of the paddock with riders going for bigger batteries. A risky move. Will it pay off? Mick Hanna and the Yeti team have embarked on a long-term development project with Shimano, with plenty of tinkering with the motor and gears can be seen going on in their pit areas. Mick is on the beautiful Yeti 160E and has added some big burly components to keep going this weekend. Shimano's downhill brakes, Saints, are used here with a massive 220mm rotor up front to help with the stopping power. Again, we see a big coil shock and Fox 38s on the suspension front. Most riders are opting for these bigger, stronger components to deal with the challenging racing and heavier bikes. One rider we usually see racing the regular EWS is Charlie Murray. He is here this weekend on his Specialized Levo. I've tried to keep it pretty much the same as my analog enduro bike. Like I've actually had to work quite a lot getting the bars to be a bit lower because the head tube's a lot thicker. So we had it like, I think we had it three centimeters higher in the front than my enduro. So we've dropped it right down and we've actually put like a low rise bar on. So the handlebars are now pretty much the same as my Enduro. One interesting change was in his suspension setup, adding max tokens in the rear and two extra into his fork to deal with the extra weight of the bike. He's also gone all out on the braking power with 220 millimeter rotors, both front and rear. This thing's like eight kgs heavier than my Enduro race bike. So we need all the stock power we can get. One bike that is certainly an eye catcher is the Pole Voima of Lee Johnson. In this bling gold colour, you need to be fast to pull off riding this bike. Pole have really gone all out on the suspension with a whopping 190 millimetres of travel. We're not far off downhill bike territory here. These are just a few of the beautiful looking bikes we can see here at the EWSE Valberg. This new sport is helping bike brands push their products even further, and I for one look forward to seeing it continue. There you have it then, you've met the riders, you've seen the bikes, it's time to find out how racing unfolded at the EWSE Valberg. Racing kicked off on Saturday with our first run through the stunning moonscape of the Terre Green.
And seeing as how we're in France, it was two French riders riding for a French team who led the way after the opening two and a bit kilometers. Isabel Cordurier led the pro women's field by a huge 15 seconds from Alia Marcellini and Laura Charles. It was Cordurier's teammate Adrian Day riding with a broken foot who came out on top by 4.4 seconds from Andrea Garibo and the series leader Edgar Carballo Gonzalez in the pro men's race. Come Sunday morning, it was a question of who could catch the flying French. There are a total of eight stages split between three loops, just shy of 60 kilometers of racing, 2,965 meters of climbing, and 3,675 vertical meters of descending. After stage four, Isabel Corderier had amassed a mighty 34 second lead ahead of Flo Espinera. In the pro men's race, it was Antoine Roche who led the way by just three tenths of a second. The ridgeline of Le Cray awaited. After loop one then, Laura Charles was sitting in third place, 59 seconds off the lead. Just ahead of Charles was Flo Espinera, growing into the race and now in second. Out front it was all Isabeau. Cordurier was scything through the stages a minute up the road from the chasing pair. Alex Rudeau was consolidating a strong start and was now as high as second. But it was his compatriot Antoine Roge who was now in the lead, albeit by the slenderest of margins. Just six hundredths of a second separated him from Rudeau. After a battery swap, water and food, the racers headed back out to take on two more stages before the final showdown on Le Terre Could Isabeau Corderia keep her cool at the front and could anyone land a killer blow at the front of the pro men's race? There was drama aplenty in the pro women's field. Series leader Alia Marcellini was out. She didn't make the start of stage six due to illness. Hard, hard today. I'm, uh, I'm really, really tired. I uh, don't feel really good. But even more dramatic was the fact that Isabel Corderier too would soon retire. The 2019 EWS champ crashed out, injured her foot and was out of the race. Laura Charles inherited the lead and now found herself 20 seconds to the good ahead of Flo Espinera with just one stage left. On stage seven, Antoine Rose suffered a heartbreaking mechanical. He finished the stage down in 19th after a puncture. Alex Rudeau, however, won the stage. His lead was now 22 seconds with only one stage left to play for. It would all be decided on Le Terre Gris. Flo Espinera won on the final stage of the day through the stunning grey earth, but the wait for her first EWS E-win would have to wait. Just three tenths of a second behind her on the stage was the race winner, Laura Charles. Charles took the win by 19 and a half seconds from the Chilean. Laura Charles took her second win of the year ahead of Flo Espinera. Adrian Day's bid for victory had faltered with a mechanical on stage seven, but he had won on Le Terre Gris the previous evening and promptly decided to do it again. It came at just the right time too. Day's pace had been sensational all week and that final stage win would be enough to secure him second on the podium ahead of Antoine Rouge. There was to be no catching Alex Rudeau. The Comensal Enduro Project racer took his very first EWSE victory in some style to the delight of the home fans. Uh, really good. Uh, not a good beginning on the two first stage. But after, I'm really confident on the bike and the other long stage was better and better. So In the pro men's, there is that debut victory for Rudeau. Day second and Rouge third. Yannick Pontal was fourth, and the first non-Frenchman was Charlie Murray in fifth. She may still be waiting to open her win account, but Flo Espinera now leads the way in the pro women's field from Laura Charles and Alia Marcellini. And in the pro men's, Yannick Pontal has the leader's plate. Edgar Carballo Gonzalez is second, and Andrea Garibo is third. Espinera and Carballo Gonzalez's superb form this season ensures the Orbea Fox Enduro team lead the way in the team's championship just ahead of Miranda Factory team with Lapierre Overvolt in third. Well, an absolutely brutal day out in the stages in some red hot heat, but I'm joined <laughs> by Josh Cross and Josh, you survived. 
How was your race? What a day. It was uh, <laughs> definitely hot. I think temperatures hit almost 47 degrees on my Garmin out the back there on the liaison to seven and six. So uh, seven hours, 80K, 4,000 meters of vert. It was a, it was a big day, a big day. Uh, let's talk about, I mean, we've got to talk about Alex Rideau, haven't we? Like debut win, EWSE. He's come here from EWS and just absolutely one of the big talking points of the season so far. Absolutely. And it, an exceptionally talented rider. He finished seventh last weekend in Canada, his best ever result. And uh, also, we were told from Enrico that he's a World Cup class trials rider as well. So on a course like this that's so technical, he was the only rider to clean the extreme liaison to six. And that was a ridiculous feat. <laughs> that makes zero sense to me, but incredible all at the same time. But now we talked about his trials background. There's another thing that we've, we've kind of seen throughout the weekend and that a lot of EWS racers have come to this first ever EWSE standalone round and they've done well. Yeah. How, how big a part does the pressure play in it? Because they don't have anything to prove. They're just here to Big have a go time. at e-bikes. Big time. They've all come off a huge race in Canada. They're coming here for a bit of fun. It starts their next break coming into Whistler. So there's no pressure. They can come here and have fun. The trails, the, tra the tracks, the stages, the mountains, the heat, everything here was pretty wild. And Yannick himself said that he was playing his cards today for the championship. Mm -hmm. So he played his cards, didn't push too hard. He had a lot of pressure on his shoulders, but he was playing his cards for the championship. Whereas Alex, uh, Adrian, Yoon, uh, Charlie Murray, there's a bunch of cats in there in the top 10 who had exceptional rides today. I mean, they're exceptional athletes. So to come across here, it's not like they've just jumped off the couch and jumped on yeah. their bike. They're already world class. It shines more light on the e-bikes. Um, I just wish they weren't so fast. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's talk about right Adrian Day. Adrian Day, he's arrived here and you'll know yourself, one of the big things about you know bike racers is you guys love just that sort of hard edge. And he was there with a shoe four times too big for his foot <laughs> yeah. because he had a bolt out the end of his big toe yeah. and he was on flat pedals. And he won that Terre Gris stage twice. Yeah. And he you know, finished second for his troubles and yeah. just an unbelievable performance. An unbelievable athlete. I mean, Adrian Daly has been one of the best athletes we've ever had for EWS. Unfortunately, he's been, his career has been made by injuries and flat pedals today. I mean, one, two, three on the podium. Um, if you can ride flat pedals here with how steep, how gnarly the corners were. I mean, the bottom of stage six was diabolical how slippery it was. One French rider who had a bad day at the office. Let's talk about Isabel Cordurier. Now, it just just goes to show you, I mean, you know, she was here, like we've just said, no pressure yeah. at all. But at the same time, it shows you just how fickle Enduro can be. You know, there was, we were in the edit writing the script, and we're like, you know, she's got a minute's lead, yeah. and then one crash, and all of a sudden, the season looks in jeopardy now with that foot injury. This e-bike racing is getting so tough and so long, It's a, it really is an Enduro event. You've got to last the whole day. Well, let's talk about the winner then, Laura Charles. You know, absolutely, second win of the year, class of the field, really just on point throughout. But who's your money on them for both titles? Go on. Uh, Towards the middle of the season, who you put your money on? I kind of want my money on Yannick. I think Yannick's going to come into form. He knows these trails, he's French, and I'll keep bringing that up because this specific skill set is very... Uh, iconic to this area, these rocky trails, these slippery corners, the switchbacks, the nose pick turn things that I can't figure out to save my life. But Yannick put in a fantastic performance this weekend. He was just off the podium. So for him to come away with the series lead, the number one plate moving forward, and to go into the break for the next couple of months knowing that, uh, they're all going to go back and put in a, an extreme amount of work. And Edgar's definitely going to go back and just rip that barbell in half. <laughs> so I would not like to be the guy who owns the gym that Edgar works on <laughs> yeah. in a minute. But in the pro women's then, Flo Espinier or Laura Charles, midway point in the season, where's your money going? Uh, I think Flo's got the advantage right now. She's already got that points lead, but Laura has the ability just to go and race for wins. She doesn't really have the pressure because she's out of the championship. But if she wins and wins again, She's going to be right there, and then a bit, the pressure builds. So Flo has to finish. She has to finish at the worst second to make it happen. So there's a lot of pressure to finish these races, and all of a sudden when that championship's on the line, it gets pretty heavy. <laughs> well, there you go. Aside from our own expert analysis, though, Neil Donahue has continued his journey deep into a mountain bike racing pub quiz black hole. Brace yourselves. Here's this week's stat attack. 
stat attack. Let's get to know the EWS E Series contenders so far by looking at the best results of their racing careers. Series leader Edgar Cabala Gonzalez took the Tweed Valley win and backed this up with a third at Petsam Janita. No stranger to the podium, he won the Spanish Downhill National Championships in 2019 and was sure to celebrate after a third place in 2017 and a second in 2018 at the same race. Yannick Pontal took the win at the inaugural EWC race in Zermatt, with a fourth at Tweed Valley and another win at Petsam Janita. E-bike racing is clearly the Frenchman's forte, placing no lower than sixth in the rounds that he's completed. Italian Andrea Garibo took second at Tweed Valley and fourth at Petson. 2016 was the last time he took the podium with a win in the senior category at the Italian Daniel National Championships. Tiago Ladiera took second place at Petson Janita. He has a wealth of Portuguese Cup downhill wins and podiums as a youth and junior, along with national and European downhill championships in 2018. The youngest rider in the top 10 will be hungry for a gold medal. Lee Johnson is a regular at the top step of UK enduro races and was Welsh Downhill National Champion in 2018, taking third place on home-ish soil at Tweed Valley and sixth in Petson. The Welshman is flying the flag for the UK in the Euro heavy sport. Another notable rider inside the top 10 is perhaps the greatest mountain biker Whoa. ever, Nicholas Vullios, who holds 10 Downhill World Championship titles, 16 World Cup wins and four EWS E wins. Now time for the women. Alia Marcellini, 2014's Italian Daniel National Champion, leads the series after wins in Pets of Janisa and third at Tweed Valley. Marcellini has five podiums at European Daniel races and a silver medal from the Four Cross Pro Tour. A fourth and second place see Flo Espinera in second overall. The Chilean previously raced the EWS, a sixth at her home round of Low Barnecchia in 2018, her best result. Laura Charles, another XC racer who now favours gravity's assistance. First race in the EWS between 2018 in 2021, 10th being her best result, before switching over to EWSE in 2021 and finding herself on the podium with two wins and a second place and a first at Tweed Valley this year. Mountain bike veteran Tracy Mosley rounds out the top five. Her impressive Palmares includes 16 World Cup downhill wins, two overall titles, a World Championship Whoa. win, 15 EWS wins and two EWSE wins, and four seconds and even some four cross wins in there. Neil Donoghue there, not a man to mess about. Yannick Pontal made EWSE history back in Zermatt in 2020 when he won the first ever round of the championship. He's a man who lives, eats, sleeps and breathes bike racing. And seeing as how we're at his home round, we thought that he'd be the perfect racer to catch up with for this week's Rider Diary. I'm uh, Yannick, uh, I'm riding for SRAM and uh, I'm an e-mountain biker. I work for the French distributor for Trolley Design. I manage like inside sales, some marketing stuff uh, for France. So I won the first ever Enduro e-bike race. It was a big surprise, but I don't know, there is a part of chance, but uh, yeah. I was uh, in a good shape, you know. It's a pre-race meal, you know, like uh, before yeah, the most... race, uh, we're enjoying some uh, to share some moments together, to eat some uh, good healthy food or not, <laughs> and uh, drink some beer. So yeah, it's a really cool, uh, relaxed moment together before the race. Do you want? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yes. Yeah. Cheese me up. There we go. Mm -hmm. I live in Nice, so. It's very, very close to, to Varberg and there is some typical French uh, corner, very tight. The turns are so tricky, like that, and you have to open the, the corner to, to be in the, on, the, on the good way at the, at, the, at the end of the turn, you know, to keep the speed, so it's a typical French technique. <laughs> Yeah, it's a practice day. We will go to the first loop and uh, we will discover the very fresh stages and uh, the biker is ready. We will test some, some uh, different setting on the fork and uh, yeah, we'll see. And uh, looking forward to discover the, the new, new tracks. <laughs>
pretty hard uh, start, you know. It was uh, very fast. I, I love this kind of trail, but there is some uh, uh, some physical parts. So yeah, we'll see. It will be another day for sure. Oh yeah, yesterday was a, a long day. I, I think I have a, a too safe run, but uh, it was so loose, very dry, so um, I'm happy with that. This morning uh, we are going for eight stages, um, a little bit uh, more stressful than usual, you know. We are at home, I want to and give my best, so we will see, I will try to enjoy and to be relaxed. Yeah, we will see, but I will try to enjoy like, like in the practice. So happy to finish there. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Just one flash, no making it hey, yeah, It's uh, always it's an adventure. <laughs> so happy to finish. Yeah. This morning was I was not, not good uh, on my body. Yeah. That a little bit too stressed. And uh, this afternoon was better on the longest one. Oh yeah, it was a pretty long day. The uh, finish four, uh, really close to the podium, but I'm really happy because I'm uh, now a series leader. So that's really great for me. So now I will take some rest because it was a, a big, big race. And I uh, will try to keep uh, this plate. <laughs> great to hear from Yannick, who will no doubt be one of the racers to watch next time we hear the beeps and go racing once again.